Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Vehicle Ride and Handling, Testing, Modification and Development. What I want to do in today's video is talk about the very important connection between handling and aerodynamics. Let's take a look. So firstly, lots of people seem to assume that for a road car, handling and aerodynamics have got nothing much to do with each other. But that is completely wrong. Aerodynamics has a dramatic effect on car handling, especially as you go faster. So there are two main effects. The first is on cornering grip. The grip your tyres develop on the road when you are going around a corner depend on car aerodynamics. Secondly, the ability of the car to go in a straight line is heavily dependent on car aerodynamics. Those are two pretty dramatic aspects of car handling, cornering grip and straight line stability, and both are influenced by car aero. So let's take the first one, cornering grip. Now what a lot of people don't know or don't realise is most road cars, 99.999% of road cars have got aerodynamic lift. Now, that means as you go faster, the airflow passing over the top of the car and under the car causes the car to actually weigh less, to try and lift the car up off the road. Now, obviously, it doesn't succeed in lifting the car up off the road, or you'd be flying an aircraft, not driving a car. But the effective weight of the car gets less as you go faster. And furthermore, the effective weight of the car probably changes differently on the front axle compared with the rear axle. In other words, the effective weight distribution front to rear also changes. So not only does the car weigh less, but one end weighs less to a greater extent than the other end. Now, as soon as you reduce the effective weight of the car, the pushing down on the tyres, uh, pushing the tyres down onto the road, that decreases as well. And since tyre grip depends on how hard the tyre is being pushed down onto the road, obviously the tyres will reduce grip as you go faster. Now, it's easy for people to say, oh, it would be very, very, very tiny change, but it's not. It's actually sufficient that you can easily feel it. And what a lot of people don't recognise is, oh, gee, the car doesn't seem to grip as well when I'm going fast, but that must just be because the cornering loads are greater. No, it's because the cornering loads are probably not a lot greater than going around a tight corner slowly, but there's aerodynamic lift occurring as well. Now, the other aspect to keep in mind, and this is quite complex, it's actually covered in one of my books in some detail, but aerodynamic lift and the opposite, downforce, have a disproportionate impact on grip. So a lot of people look at the weight of the car, say, okay, well, it weighs, you know, two and a half thousand pounds, so 50 pounds lift is going to make no difference at all. But in fact, because of these complex mechanisms, which relate mostly to changes in flow, transients, quick changes in flow, uh, there's some very good detailed technical papers that show that drivers can feel the change in aerodynamic lift quite easily. And if you dial that lift out by making changes, the driver can immediately feel that, even though the aerodynamic lift or downforce figures aren't enormous compared with the weight of the car. So aerodynamic lift and downforce have a disproportionate impact on grip and stability of the car and making changes in these areas uh, can be felt, can clearly be felt on the road. Now, I'm not just talking from theory. Here's my little Honda Insight, no longer on the road. It had a pretty good run over about 15 years. I've made some major aerodynamic changes to that car, primarily underneath the car. That's where I like working. People can't see it, so aesthetics don't matter. You've got such a big area you're working with that even small changes in aerodynamic flows can create major changes in aerodynamic pressures. The little Honda develops measured downforce. I can actually measure the downforce that car is now developing at any speed over about 50 miles an hour. And I can easily change the feel the change in grip. I've got a test corner that I go around when I made the changes to the underside of that car to give downforce. I could clearly go faster around that test corner. No imagination, it was obvious. 
All right, so changing a car, especially changing a car from one developing lift to one developing downforce is easily able to be felt on the road. And that's my personal experience. That's just not a theoretical construct. That's actually measured downforce and a, and a, a change that was quite perceptible uh, on the road in terms of cornering. And of course, the faster you go, the more the change is created because the aerodynamic forces go up very fast with increasing speed. So if you have a car that currently develops aerodynamic lift, and it almost certainly does, getting rid of that lift or even better still getting downforce will make a dramatic effect to higher speed handling in terms of grip. That is a fact. The other aspect I mentioned is straight line stability. Now this doesn't apply to all cars. I wouldn't say 99.99% of road cars have poor straight line stability, maybe 20%, 20 or 30%. And that is, if you're driving in a straight line, and especially if you've got a gusty crosswind blowing across the road, you've got to keep correcting. You've got to keep correcting the car. And the faster you go, the more you've got to keep correcting. It's very wearing because the car feels unstable. It doesn't feel settled. You go faster and it's more and more work for the driver. And conversely, a car which has got really good stability and even better still has got downforce, the faster you go, the better the car feels. Now, if you drive some uh, high, high level Porsches and, and other um, cars that do develop downforce from the factory, you'll always be amazed. Gee, this car feels good. The faster I'm going, the better it feels on the road. That's aerodynamics in, uh, in action. So what do you do if you've got a car which has got poor straight line stability? Well, you can make dramatic changes. Honda Insight, I seem to have lost the photo. Perhaps it's there on the next one. Yes, there it is. So if you look at the back of this car, let's see if I can bring the mouse over, you can see I've got some fins there as well as a ducktail rear spoiler. And the combination of those two, and especially the fins, dramatically improves straight line stability to the extent that on this car, which has got fairly soft suspension, I fitted it with air suspension, uh, in a gusty crosswind, you'd feel the car roll in the wind gust, but you had no steering correction was needed. You could almost take your hands off the steering wheel and it would not deviate in a straight line, even with gusty crosswinds. Now, you might be looking at this car and say, oh, well, it's a pretty slow car. Actually, that's runs, uh, that car runs uh, turbo, water air intercooling, uh, MoTeC programmable engine management, lots of boost. Uh, it's actually a reasonably quick car, 200, 120 mile an hour top end, 200 kilometer an hour top end. Uh, and it was still winding up. At, at that speed, the car feels incredibly solid on the road. It's developing downforce. It's got immense stability with the rear fins. Um, it's like night and day compared with a standard in sight going fast. Um, and uh, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. It's just absolutely transformed. And anyone who, who would suggest aerodynamics has got little to do with car handling simply hasn't experienced the change that is actually possible. I might also add aerodynamic changes to improve high speed handling are typical cheap and easy. Um, people often think, oh, well, I need an expensive carbon fibre wing and an expensive carbon fibre splitter. And no, you don't need any of that. What you need is you need some simple underbody changes. And perhaps if the car has poor straight line stability, some rear fins, or if you do use a wing on the back, some big end plates on the wing, which have the same effect as having fins. That is moving cross-sectional area towards the back of the car, moving the lateral center of pressure towards the back of the car if you want to talk about it in uh, technical terms. So two books, Vehicle Ride and Handling, Testing, Modification and Development. I've got a, a chapter on aerodynamics. That book's out uh, August 2024. If you're watching this video after that, it will be out now. Or if you really want to go into detail on how to develop downforce, how to improve stability, my major book, uh, vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development has a major chapter on improving those two aspects, getting rid of lift, getting downforce 
and getting much, much better straight line stability. And just to reiterate, if you think aero has got not much to do with handling, unless you're doing, you know, 300 miles an hour, that is completely wrong. Any speed over about 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour, you'll start to feel the changes that good aerodynamic improvements can make. Thank you.